as you sit there in your chair, you're expending a rough amount of energy, somewhere around a calorie per minute. When we exercise, we can increase this by about 20 or 30 fold. As you sit there, your muscle contributes about 30% of your energy. During exercise, it contributes about 90% of your energy. So it becomes the major site of where we burn uh, carbohydrate and fat. Um, and when we eat a meal, about 80% of the uh, energy that's ingested in that meal is distributed to the muscle. In other words, when muscle begins to fail or when we develop problems with our muscle, it's, it's uh, not surprising then that we develop a range of diseases associated with that. There's two things that have happened in modern science that have unintended consequences in terms of the way that muscle functions. The first is automation. So in modern life now, uh, we're predisposed to being physically inactive. We spend a, la a large amount of our time in a sitting position. So even if we do a half hour of purposeful exercise first thing in the morning, we spend the, uh, about 90% of the next 15 and a half hours of waking, we spend that time in a seated position. So one of the problems with sitting is that it's an independent risk factor for uh, a, a majority of diseases. In other words, even if you do exercise first thing in the morning or last thing at night or whenever you exercise during the day, if you do it in a single bout and you spend the rest of your day sitting, you might be called what's classified as an act, uh, active couch potato. <laughs> so potatoes don't have much use for muscles. And so if you look at someone like this, and we tend to associate uh, inactivity and inappropriate diet with, uh, with an increase in size, in actual fact, the muscles of individuals such as this guy on the couch are actually getting smaller and smaller and working less and less. The second major thing that modern science has delivered us is medication. And as a result, we're living longer and longer. So we have a worldwide aging or, or graying population. And if you look at the yellow um, segment on those pie charts, uh, that represents the numbers of people who are over 65. So at current projections, sometime after the year 2050, the numbers of people who are greater than 65 years of age will exceed the numbers of people who are less than 15 years of age for the first time in, in human history. However, with aging and with extended lifespans, due to this uh, improvements in our medication, unfortunately, that's associated with chronic diseases. So in data from the US, adults uh, aged over 65 years, the current numbers uh, would suggest that 92.2% uh, of those individuals have one or more chronic diseases. So although we're living longer, we might not necessarily be living healthier. In this case, chronic diseases were defined as the usual ones we tend to hear about, hypertension, coronary heart disease, stroke, cancer, and so forth. But there's one disease that's not mentioned here that I want to talk a bit more about today, and that's sarcopenia. So sarcopenia is defined as the age-related uh, wasting of muscle. And the, uh, in the word comes from Greek, which means a poverty of flesh. But it also means a poverty of strength. So we lose muscle mass and we lose strength as we age. And there's no way, it's inescapable, it's a fact that happens. After about the age uh, of 30, we lose 3 to 8% of our muscle every decade. Keep that number in mind because I'm going to come back to it. So every decade we lose somewhere between 3 and 8% of, of our muscle. On the right hand side, um, in the second uh, figure there, you see the, um, the appearance of the thigh muscle of, of an individual, a cross section of their thigh. And what you can see there is that an elderly individual, they've lost a large proportion of their muscle mass. So the white uh, um, uh, color there indicates uh, adipose tissue or fat. So the muscle has shrunk. We've lost muscle as we age. Beneath that is a 74-year-old athlete who has trained their whole life and has managed to maintain their muscle mass, um, despite what I said was the inescapable fact that we would lose muscle throughout, throughout our, our life. So you might wonder, well, what is the prevalence of sarcopenia? Is it just some disease that this guy's really interested in and you know, it's not really that relevant? Well, at the moment, in over 65s, it's about 20%. This is data from the US. It's about 20% prevalence. In people over the age of 85, greater than half of the individuals have sarcopenia. Now, when you lose strength and you lose power in your muscles, you lose, uh, these, are, these are things that are greatly associated with uh, balance. If you lose your uh, capacity to balance, you're more predisposed to falls and fractures. So this loss of muscle mass um, is, is, a, is a strong risk factor for frailty syndromes, for loss of independence, 
and for general ill health as we age. We don't have any figures for Ireland, but what we do know in Ireland is that there's, there's another part to this story which is disease-related malnutrition. And this might surprise you, but in Ireland at any one time there's 140,000 people who are suffering from disease-related malnutrition. That costs about, in direct costs, about 1.5 billion euro to the Exchequer. And you might think, well, how much does that mean? You know, is, what kind of disease is this again? That's more than the direct cost of obesity. So this is, a, this is a, um, an invisible type of disease. Disease-related malnutrition, very strongly associated with age-related uh, muscle wasting. So why is strength important? I mentioned the incidence of, of frailty and, and, uh, and loss of, of, uh, of independence. If we look at individuals who are either over 60 or under 60, and we look at their strength, so their whole body strength, three colors here represent weak individuals, the average individuals, the strong individuals. If you look at the two red bars, what you see there is that as we age, so the over 60s, they have a four, um, four times um, uh, elevated death rate compared to the under 60s. So that makes sense. If we're, if we're a little older, we're more likely to die. However, on the right-hand side, if you compare the green to the red, the stronger that you are, so the strongest third of the population, have half the death rate of those who are weakest. In other words, if you preserve your muscle mass, you've a, you have a greater chance of living that little bit longer. Now, why would that effect be so obvious? And why would it be of relevance to something like cancer? So are there other diseases that, that sarcopenia or muscle wasting relate to? And there are. So all of these diseases uh, listed on this slide um, are, are, uh, co coincide with muscle wasting. So in each one of those, when the disease manifests itself, it's also associated with a loss of muscle mass and therefore a loss of independence. The one I want to focus on is immobilization and bed rest. So if you take uh, young, healthy males in their 20s, student, age, um, student population, and you've probably heard of this 10,000 steps that you need to do in any given day uh, in order to be, uh, to be healthy. If you take people who are making those 10,000 steps and you reduce their activity by making them take elevators, um, uh, making them take escalators, pushing them around in wheelchairs, making them sit a lot more, if you reduce their number of steps to 2,000, they lose about 5% of their muscle mass in the space of 14 days. So I said that usually we lose about 3 to 8% per decade over the age of 30. These guys lose 5% of their muscle mass within 14 days. If an elderly person over the age of 70 is bedridden for 10 days, they lose 10% of their muscle mass. In other words, depending on the situation, in as little as two weeks, you can lose m the equivalent muscle mass of what would take a decade to lose. So we want to avoid these things. We want to avoid mobilization, we want to stay active, and we want to avoid best bed rest where possible. So how should we do this? And typically what we're told is that we need to get out and walk more. We need to do half an hour of activity accumulated on, f on five different days of the week. Well, I'm going to tell you that that's probably not enough. So the principle of specificity in terms of exercise training is that the body adapts specifically to the, the imposed demands. So if we want to get bigger, if we want to improve our strength and improve our muscles, we have to lift weight. Going out for a walk isn't going to make you stronger. And in fact, there's some evidence to say that life, people who are lifelong endurance or aerobic or cardio exercisers are predisposed to losing muscle mass compared to those individuals who do strength training. The other interesting thing is that when it comes to diseases like diabetes and obesity, the most recent evidence would suggest that it's combined endurance and aerobic exercise that works. You shouldn't just be doing one or the other. There should be a combination within there. A second principle um, in, in, in exercise training is the principle of progressive overload. And this is Milo, the wrestler, uh, two and a half thousand years ago, a famous Greek wrestler. And the story goes that in order to develop his strength as he, as he grew, he used to carry a bull, a calf, around from a young age. So he carried it every day, and as the bull got bigger, he got stronger. I don't know if this is true. But the point is that each day he, he pushed himself a little bit harder and his body adapted accordingly. And that's what, uh, uh, an important principle of the way we exercise. So then the question is, if an adult is old, or in this case they're, over, they're uh, over 85 years of age, if we exercise train them, can they actually make improvements? 
So on the left hand side, what you're seeing there is pre and post, and what you're looking at is the cross sectional area. And in this particular individual, that person's muscle in their quad again, in their, in their thigh muscle, has increased by about 44%. On the right hand side, you're looking at their improvement in strength, it's improved by about 50%. That was after 12 weeks of training that focused on, on the quadricep muscles in 85-year-old individuals. So in this case, the uh, muscle wasting could be reversed. In other words, we've reversed the aging process. So how should we exercise then? Does it have, do we have to go to a gym? Do we, have to do, uh, do we have to invest in expensive equipment? Something we're excited about at UCD at the moment is using body weight exercises. So these are exercises that you use your own body weight um, in space to provide a resistance against your, against, your, um, against your muscles. So I'll give you two little studies that we've done right now. We took young college age males again, obese and overweight, and we trained them for six weeks, three days a week, half an hour each day, and all they did were these body weight type exercises, no equipment. After the six weeks, we saw about a 3% improvement in muscle mass, particularly in the legs, and we had that holy grail, they lost a small bit of fat as well. They're, they were young individuals. In uh, older adults, um, starting at the age of 55, but of a mean age of about 63, we see the same thing after 12 weeks. Body weight only exercises three times a week, we see about a 3% improvement in, uh, in their muscle mass. So improving muscle mass is one thing, but these exercises are very similar to things that we do in, not in everyday activity. So we lift things above our head, we get up off the ground, we get up out of chairs. Uh, so these are what we call activities of daily living. And one of the major predictors of loss of independence is when an older adult can no longer do these activities of daily living. So we're excited now to begin to look at these body weight exercises and how they might improve the overall health and function, functional capacity of older adults. So I suppose the last thing I'll say is that in the case of sarcopenia or muscle wasting, you don't just wake up one day and, and have this situation. It's a continuum, it progresses over time. And so I was talking about those body weight exercises being able to increase muscle mass. But if we can just delay the aging process, so if we, if we just maintain muscle mass rather than actually having to improve it, you know, that in itself will have benefits to their overall health. So my simple message is this. We need to prescribe exercise like we prescribe medicine. So we shouldn't just give everyone the same medicine. We should treat the individual. And we should treat the condition. So going out and doing si uh, 30 minutes of, of walking every day might not cut it when it comes to people who have age-related uh, muscle wasting. So in other words, what I'd say is use it or lose it because mu muscle matters and only the strong survive. Thank you.